This is the Pearl Pass Road. We're looking up at Star Peak and Mace Peak. And it is cold. You can see there's a pretty heavy frost. And the temperature's around 32 degrees here. Good morning. Today's a little bit different. I'm going for a hike up the Pearl Pass Road towards the Taggart Green Wilson Hut and then possibly on up to Montezuma Basin. We'll see how I feel. I uh, wanted to get a little bit of a I'll walk in at a higher elevation. I'll have to look. I think I'm at 9,800 feet here, maybe 10,000 feet. It's probably 10,000 feet. But again, it's pretty cold and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. I just got to the little pond on the Pearl Pass Road and I've been hiking, I don't know, probably about 20 minutes or so. Uh, I did a video years ago on the number of avalanche paths going up to the Taggart Green Wilson hut. And I think when I did it, did that video, I was under the impression there were eight major avalanche paths. I think I actually identified 11 avalanche paths going up to the Taggart Green Wilson hut. And some of these paths are huge. And I'm looking at one now. They most, most of them have names and I can't recall all of their names at this point. Here's one of them right in front of me now, going up to, I believe it's Malmute Peak. And this is a pretty sizable slide path. Well, I'm over 10,000 feet now and um, I'm breathing. I actually feel pretty good. And as we come, go around this corner, we're getting a really good view of Mace Peak. Named after Greg Mace, who was the president of Mountain Rescue Aspen in the 80s. And Greg died in a climbing accident on the Maroon Bells, or to be more specific, Maroon Peak. A very, very sad incident. Well, we're just coming up into the large meadow above the footbridge and coming to the avalanche path that I have skied a number of times and guided. It's really a nice ski. I don't like calling it an avalanche path, but it is, it is an avalanche path because when you call it that, it gives it the connotation that it's dangerous all the time. And that is not the case. Under the right conditions, when I've skied it, it was not going to slide. And I can say that pretty confidently that it was not going to slide. It was hard pack, corn snow, skiing it in the spring, and went up it when it was quite firm, somewhat frozen, got to the top, and then waited for just that top <coughs> layer to slide out that top layer to thaw out, I should say. 
and then we would ski it. And this year, ski season, I hope to be here in the spring of 2025, and hopefully we'll ski it under the right conditions. But this is the path I'm talking about. The bottom part here is probably right at 30 degrees and just wonderful cruising terrain. When I say the bottom part, I'm talking at least 500 vertical feet. The uh, path itself to the top of the ridge is just under 2,000 vertical feet. It's around 18 something. And the top part, depending on which way you go, is quite steep. It's hard to see in the shadows, the shading. I try to stay out of that steep bowl and I have used the ridge that's on the, in the sunlight just to the left, right of the bowl. And again, I know it's hard to explain that, but using my pole right there, you can see the sun hitting that ridge. And that's a nice ridge to come down. I've seen a number of campers on the side of the road who are probably climbing Castle Peak and Conundrum, and hopefully they've started a lot earlier than I have. I start right around eight o'clock, maybe a little after, and right now it's five minutes to nine. Uh, so in the world of guiding, I would say I'm a little later than I should be. But right now, there is not a cloud anywhere in the sky. So I feel pretty good about the weather conditions. Yesterday I did the video, which was on August 5th at Rudai on stand-up paddleboarding. Today is August 6th as I'm walking up towards Montezuma Basin. I keep saying Montezuma Basin and not Castle Peak. I've only been at elevation now for a week, higher elevation. I'm not quite sure how my body is adjusting and acclimatizing. So far I feel pretty good, but you never know. Yesterday I talked about the book Outlive and Peter Atea is the author. And I really, as I said yesterday, really like the book. It's, uh, as I said, it's a focus on less on longevity, but more on quality of life in your last decade or two of living. And again, as I said yesterday, it has really resonated with me in 2020. I had a number of health issues. I had a torn meniscus that was repaired at the Stedman Clinic. It was completely torn. So I was on crutches for two months and it took a year to heal. It's like a ACL rip. And I also had prostate surgery. I won't get into that because I think it's kind of weird just talking about that type of surgery. 
but maybe not. Maybe it's helpful to people. But the recovery for that took a number of months. I had to wear a catheter and a leg bag for two months, off and on. And I think more for that surgery, it was the psychological element that kind of got me down. So both of those were happening at the same time. And I was also working an office job with the nonprofit Roaring Fork Outdoor Volunteers, which I love the organization. I love the mission of the organization. It's under incredibly good leadership with Becca Shield as the executive director. And it just really does incredible work creating public land stewards. And we need more of public land stewards for our public lands. But the office job, I don't think it was too healthy for me. I really lost a lot of my fitness and with the recovery, I use the term that I don't even like using, but my fitness, I was what I would call skinny fat and or skinny soft. And that's another reason why in the last year or a few months, I've started doing resistance training so that I do have a little bit better ability to recover if I'm, if I lose my balance and a little bit more strength that way. I think it's definitely helped a lot. Uh, we're coming up to the last dwelling on this route before you go over Pearl Pass. It's called the Mace Hut. I've had friends that have lived here. It was owned years ago by the Mace family. Maybe they still do, I don't know. I know Julie Mace lived up here. Yeah, I think it was originally built by Stuart Mace, kind of the patriarch of the Mace family and the figurehead for Ashcroft. The hut was pretty damaged in an avalanche a few years ago. So that's the Mace Hut. And if I'm not mistaken, the avalanche came down from that side. And I did say it's the last hut. Actually, there's another hut or cabin going up to Montezuma Basin. And that cabin is pretty hidden and friends of mine own it. And I will not show the location of that particular cabin. And on just a little bit up here, around the corner, we're coming to the last parking spot that if you're climbing Castle Peak and you're trying to do all of the 14ers in Colorado and you're doing it in the official method or whatever that is, I have no clue, but you would have to park here to get 3,000 feet up and 3,000 feet down. And I think that's the criteria for getting and climbing a 14er and making it official. It kind of keeps it from the ability to climb up Pikes Peak or Mount Evans in your car and saying that you summited a 14er. You have to do it human powered, walk up, no bikes, no cars, no trail, bikes, and then walk back down. And this would be the spot 
where this car is parked. And then there's another parking spot up here on the left where there's another car. So if these folks are doing the peak, they're doing it in the official manner. Well, the Pearl Pass Road continues that way and up to Pearl Pass. Well, I'm at Montezuma Basin. It was a nice little three hour hike uh, to get here. And I'm going to take a break, have something to eat, have my lunch, and then head back down. I don't feel like walking up the scree. Um, could walk up the snow, but I don't have spikes or anything to do that. I'm guessing it's soft enough, but I don't know. But this has been good enough for me. And I'm going to turn this around so you can see uh, what I'm looking at in front of me. So that's Montezuma Basin. The snow field is a little smaller than I thought it would be with the cooler temperatures this summer. But I guess it's accumulative how much has been melting out over the years. If I stand over here, you can just almost see the summit of Castle Peak. The summit would be right there. And then right there is the base of that area. And then that's Conundrum Peak over to the right. The weather's nice. The weather would not turn me back today to go past my turnaround time, but still, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about the day and the hike. And I know I'm still acclimatizing. And I can think of a dozen other excuses, but I'm going to let that go. So as I bring the camera back around, right there, that is Mace Ridge. The um, waterfalls down here is actually flowing really well. 